I'm E.G. Marshall. You're just in time to join me for an adventure in suspense and terror. The most heart-stopping terror of all. Not the terror of the eccentric, the grotesque, or bizarre, but the chilling terror that slowly emerges when one discovers that all the standards, the laws, the customs that have so naturally governed our existence have suddenly been revoked or repealed and no longer apply. Gone are the familiar, the everyday usages which regulated life in a comfortable, predictable flow. And you are suddenly confronted with a living nightmare of chaos and anarchy. Our mystery drama, To Kill with Confidence, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Marion Seldes. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the Sinus Medicines, and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. I want that sinus medicine. Headache tablets? No, sinus medicine. Sinus tablets. Helps the headache and the pressure. Oh, you mean sign off. Exactly. Headache pain is one thing. A sinus headache is something else. Sometimes your whole face can seem to throb with pain. You want relief. Take sign off tablets. S-I-N-E-O-F-F. The sinus medicine that gives you a full dose of pure aspirin plus a sinus drainer. Sign off. The sinus medicine that helps relieve sinus pain while you drain. And Sinoff doesn't stop there. Have you tried Sinoff Sinus Spray, the fastest known form of sinus congestion relief? It works in seconds. That's Sinoff Sinus Spray. When sinus flares up, use Sinoff Tablets and Spray, only as directed. S-I-N-E-O-F-F. Sinoff. Exactly. Sinoff, the sinus medicines in the bright red box. solid thought to the choosing of a car than to the selection of a wife. There are girls who will take more time and care in deciding on a fall outfit than in picking a husband. Who is to blame? A good deal of it can be placed on the shoulders of society, which somehow tries to imply that marriages are made in heaven. This being the case, why bother being too careful down here below? At any rate, let us consider this extremely attractive, newly married young couple driving along a superhighway near a Midwestern city. Why don't we get off the turnpike, darling? Is anything wrong? No, I, I just thought I'd like a change of scene. Okay, next exit. <laughs> You're an angel. Well, it's getting on toward lunchtime, and I think this is the town where they have a place that serves the most fantastic sauerbraten. Really? Mm -hmm. A landmark. You know, one of those terribly authentic restaurants. Ruth? Dear, you are in for a treat. <laughs> Except for one thing. What's that? I happen to despise sour <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be sorry, dearest. You and I, what? Well, we'll never have days like this again. Days like what? Well, let's call them days of discovery. Days of getting to know each other. Days of finding out about each other. Such as, uh, you don't like sour <laughs> What don't you like? Oh, I like everything. Even artichokes? Especially artichokes. <laughs> You'll have absolutely no trouble feeding us. I think that's why I fell in love with you. You're so even-tempered. Oh, no, you don't know that for a fact. I may have been on my best behavior all this time. Well, I just can't picture you as anything but... Well, but what? Sweet. Calm. Nice. Well, I, uh... Tried to keep my temper. I learned what it can mean to lose it. Oh, what happened? Now, that was a long time ago, darling. I found out what it can mean to lose your sense of balance and values, and, well, I plan to make amends for all that. Do you want to talk about it? No. And I'll tell you why. Oh, no, you don't have to explain. Now, what I'll have to do is explain why I won't explain. Can you follow that? <laughs> sure. I have to put it all completely out of my mind. I have to go so far as to convince myself that it never even happened. I understand. And I may have one or two deep, dark secrets of my own. Well, keep them. <laughs> That's what I dreamed about, to start a fresh, brand-new, clean slate. Agreed? Agreed. 
Now, I tell you what let's do. Let's have sour rotten anyhow. Oh, no, no, no. Well, y- you have it. I'll order something simple like hamburger. Oh, no, not in this place. Why? Well, you won't enjoy lunch. The waiters are such frightful snobs if they sense you're not there for the special. Oh, it's that kind of a place. We, we don't have to have lunch there. We can stay on the turnpike. No, no. And... Look, here's the exit. Let's turn off. Well. Well, you did have your heart set on... Uh-oh. What is it? Is something wrong? Well, the car. I think it's that mysterious vibration. Do you hear it? I don't... I don't know. What... Well, that funny noise. Oh, Leo, darling, to me, these things sound funny all the time. Is it something serious? Well, I hope not. Well, well, look, we have a thousand miles still to go. We'd better have it checked. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, but in case it is serious, do we have enough cash? Well, that's no problem, darling. We'll stop off at the first station that honors a transnational credit card. But I thought the card's only good for gasoline. No, all repairs, too. Oh, look, just up ahead, there's a big blue transnational sign that says Frank's Quality Service. Let's pull in and have the motor checked. <laughs> Are we in for some major surgery? Yeah, it's a rocker arm. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means more labor than anything else, and he's short-handed. In other words? In other words, it'll take some time, darling. Well, does that fit in with our plans? We did intend to have some lunch. And mm, we, could... we, uh, we could do that, darling, except, uh... What is it? Well, you remember I told you what happened to me last time I needed the merchants oh, repairs? Oh, um... Well, that decided me. When you're having work done in a strange town, a place you don't know, you really should stick around, keep an eye on it. That's right, of course. Well, uh, I know it'll be a bore for you. Well, I could shop. Could you? Well, your birthday's the day after tomorrow. <laughs> I'd love an hour or so. I'll look for something and I'll be able to surprise you. Well, that's a great idea. Now, what's this fellow's name? Oh, yes, Frank. Say, hey, Frank. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Renard. Yeah, what can I do for you? Uh, you've got about an hour on my car. Oh, say an hour and a half and be safe. Uh-huh. Well, my wife would like to do a little shopping. Well, and you're in luck. We got us a shopping center just three blocks from here. It's called the Golden Mall. The Golden Mall? Yeah, yeah. They got the top stores there. All the big ones from New York, Chicago. How do I get there? Oh, it's just three blocks up. Uh, see that traffic light? Yeah. You turn left, go one block. There it is. The Golden Mall. Well, thank you. <laughs> She'll come back loaded with packages. You won't thank me. <laughs> Darling, make sure you remember the name of this place. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's Frank's 24-hour quality service. Open 24 hours a day. Everybody in town knows me. Let's see. It's exactly 12 noon. Darling, I'll see you at 1.30. Make sure you remember the address, ma'am. It's 1776 Jefferson. I mean, how can you forget that one, huh? <laughs> Renard there? He should be having his car fixed. Mr. Renard? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 sure thing. Oh, hold on, huh? Mr. Renard! Hello? Leo, darling. Oh, oh, for a moment, uh... What is it, darling? Uh, nothing, dear, nothing no. at all. Uh, uh, must have been something, you... Well, well, uh, yes, uh, I just, uh, couldn't imagine who'd be calling me here. Is everything okay? No. Well, darling, what's wrong? I miss you, that's all. You realize we've been separated for almost 45 minutes? Oh. You miss me? Terribly. All right. I just called you up to keep the record clear. Will he be finished on schedule? Uh, looks that way, about another half to three quarters of an hour. All right, I'll be there one thirty on the dot. I don't like these long separations. Neither do I. Goodbye, darling. Bye. Uh, 1776 Jefferson Boulevard. Okay. Every day in the stores, ma'am? Oh, no. I just bought a little present for my husband's birthday. Uh, excuse me. Hey, let me call into the dispatcher. 37. Headed south to Jefferson. 1700 block. 17. Just a minute. What? Why are we stopping? Where did you say you wanted to go on Jefferson Boulevard? 1776. That's a number you can't forget. Well, maybe you can't forget it, but you sure can get it mixed up. You don't want to go to 1776. Why? 
Because there ain't nothing on that 1700 block worth going to. Well, I distinctly remember Look, it. ma'am, I, I know this town. Now, give me a street, any street, I'll run it down. On 1700 block of Jefferson, you got the old foundry, and it's been deserted these past 18 years. And Frank's 24-hour quality service station. No more, you don't. How can you say that? Well, I can say that because Frank's been dead, let's see, uh, it's three years now. Well, the sign says... Nobody ever bothered taking the sign down. It's too much trouble. That part of town, <laughs> you can write it off. Well, I spoke to Frank this morning. No, lady, you didn't speak to Frank. Believe me, nobody's spoken to Frank in three years. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe he's St. Peter. Although I don't think Frank would have caught up there. My husband is having his car fixed at Frank's right now. Yeah? So would you please take me to 1776 Jefferson Boulevard? But, Pam... Now, uh, shall I call a policeman or shall I hail another cab? Well, ma'am, here you are. 1776 Jefferson. And it says Frank's Quality Service, so I was right. What were you trying to... Look at what else it says on the windows. Those big signs. This property for sale? No! Look, ma'am, the place is empty. It's been empty since Frank died. But it can't be. We were high school pals, Frank and I. Look, I was here just this morning. I was here. I remember going to Frank's week. We drove in, and those signs weren't up there. There, there were cars parked and men working in there. And, and we went to the funeral. He told Leo, my husband, he told Leo that the rocker arm needed fixing. Ma'am, are you sure you want this place? My husband. I left my husband here. No, ma'am, I'm afraid you didn't leave anything or anybody. Leo is in there, in that garage. Where are you going? Can't you see it's locked? It's been locked for three years. <laughs> there's nobody in there. I'm telling you, there's nobody in there. What happened to my husband? What did they do to my husband? Now, calm, calm <laughs> down, ma'am. Think. Are you yes. sure this is the same? I'm sure. I know. Don't you try to talk me out of it. I know. I was here exactly one and a half hours ago. I was here. This place was open. This service station was operating, and there was a man here, Frank. Uh, how do you know his name was Frank? Because the name was written on his shirt. Now look, ma'am, I don't know what... I want my husband. I, I want my husband. Now, what happened to him? Ma'am, try to hold on to yourself. Don't pass out, please. Don't, don't, don't faint on me. I don't know what to do. Uh, here, here let, let, me, let me help you back to the cab. Oh, Leo. Leo. Leo, what did they do to me? Oh, oh, no. Three, seven. Thirty, seven. Come in. Quit fooling. Answer me. This is three, seven. Uh, get me some cops. Uh, get an ambulance. Get everybody over to 1776 Jefferson on the double, huh? Well, how do you figure it? Frank's 24-hour quality service. Now you see it. Now you don't. Nightmare? Illusion? Reality? Which are we dealing with? Could it be a mixture of all three? I'll return with some answers, but also with some more questions when I return in just a few moments with Act Two. Buick introduces a new concept for you to consider in light of all the concern about miles per gallon. Range. Range is what you get when you multiply the mileage your car gets per gallon by the number of gallons your car's gas tank holds. Range is one of the things that help make Buick Apollo such a special small car. It comes from coupling the Apollo's economical six-cylinder engine with a standard 21-gallon gas tank. It holds a lot, but it doesn't use a lot. Look into the Apollo. It's the Buick of small cars. Hello, this is Goldilocks. It seems like only yesterday that I was a little girl tasting porridge. You know, this one's too hot. This one's too cold. And now I conduct taste tests on diet drinks. And there's one I must tell you about. Sugar-Free Diet 7-Up. It has a fresh, natural, delicious taste. It drives my taste meter crazy. Sugar-Free Diet 7-Up. <gasps> this one's just right. Hey, ma'am, what's for dinner? Hey, ma'am, what you got? Don't miss ShopRite's Big Dairy Deli Value Jubilee. Some of the great values include ShopRite Butter, one pound brick, 69 cents. Tropicana Orange Juice, half gallon carton, 59 cents. 
Oscar Mayer bacon, 99 cents a pound, and much more. Big values in the meat case, too. ShopRite grade A whole frying chicken, just 35 cents a pound. Split or cut up fryers, 39 cents a pound. Roasting chickens up to 4 pounds, 39 cents a pound. Get a lot more for a little less this week at your ShopRite. She loves her family. She wants the best. She does all that she can do. She lets ShopRite do the rest. Hey, Ma, what's for dinner? ShopRite has the answer. Why don't you do some shopping while I'm having the car checked? Asks newlywed Leo Renard of his wife, Ruth. Reasonable enough. And so, when her shopping is finished, Ruth returns to discover that the car is gone. Leo has disappeared, and the service station has been closed these past three years. And you insist you actually were at that particular service station, Mrs. Renard? Doctor... I know you are trying to be helpful, but we aren't going to get anywhere. Why do you say that? Well, to begin with, we have a severe difference of opinion. But you... Wait, please. Let me finish. You think I'm crazy. That isn't true. Well, you have a medical term for it, I'm sure. Something to take the sharp, rough edge off it. But at this point, according to you, I'm not behaving normally. Now, does that state the case? Well, um... Look at it rationally. Which, according to you, I'm not doing now. That service station has been closed for three years. The man who owned it and ran it has been dead all this time. Then how do you account for the fact that my husband and I were there this morning? Would you agree to submit to some tests, Mrs. Renard? I'll agree to anything at this point. I'll agree to anything that will convince you that I am as sane as you are. And once we establish that and you start believing me, then perhaps we can find out what happened to Leo. Yes? May I come in? Who are you? Lieutenant Powell, City Police. Well, I suppose you can come in. What do you want? I want to help you. Well, you won't help me by telling me I'm crazy. Why would I do that? Because that's all the others can think of. Well, to begin with, you don't look crazy. Well, thanks. Do you have any influence around here? A little. What do you need? What I need is to get out of this hospital. What you need is rest. What I need is my husband. I spoke to the doctors. What do the doctors say to you? You're suffering from shock. <laughs> I'll buy that. You evidently can't face the fact that your husband has deserted you. No, that's off the mark. All right, tell me about it. Oh, I've already told it to three different police officers. Yeah, but I'm the one that counts. How long were you married? Two weeks. Where? Is all this important? Everything's important. We were married in Reliant City. By whom? Well, what is that? By I whom? The Justice of the Peace. His name? Uh, his name was uh, Dunley. No, no, uh, Dunleavy. Well, that's what the sign said. Emmett Dunleavy, J.P. How long did you know your husband? Well, it was one of those love at first sight things. But, of course, you being a cop, you wouldn't believe in that. Oh, but I do, I do. It's the only way. Tell me about him. Well, he was in town on business. What was his business? Why is that your business? Why is that an unreasonable question? Because... Because you don't know and you're ashamed to admit it. That's a lie. Instead of asking, maybe I better tell you a few things. You don't really know what he did for a living, if anything. But that, that's just... It's all right, it's all right. You don't have to say anything. Let's talk about the money. The money? The money you gave him. How do you know... My dear Mrs. Renard, you are now a member of a certain unfortunate sisterhood. What are you insinuating about my husband? Well, let's stick to the facts. How much of your money does he have? It's... It's not my money any longer. It isn't? Oh, when we married, we agreed to share everything. And how much did you share with him? Well, I had an inheritance from an aunt who died, and she left me a... Yes, yeah, she left you... $51,000. I see. I don't know what you think you see. We were going to invest it in, in the new business. What new business? He was interested in real estate, and I was a public stenographer at the hotel where he used to have dinner, and that's how we happened to meet. And we were going to go to Florida and get into a land development deal. 
$51,000. In cash? No. Bonds. We put it in bonds. Negotiable bonds, no doubt. Well, we had to be able to raise cash in a hurry. Of course. Well, it just wasn't my money. He had close to 50000 of his own. You know this for a fact? Well, that, that's what he said. Now look, uh, Mrs. Renard, I want to help you. I want to find him. Hopefully we can recover all, or at least some, of your money. Why do you insist that he ran out on me? I've told you what happened. You simply can't face the truth, can you? And you've created an hallucination about a garage. Don't you start behaving like a psychiatrist, too. Now look, the sooner we get you to face reality, the sooner we can get you to think rationally and maybe give us some leads. Look, I told you... What we have to do is get rid of this service station delusion of yours. But it isn't a delusion. I spoke to the doctor. Lying around here in bed isn't doing you any good. I asked him if I could get you to work with me. Now, you can't remain here indefinitely. You're going to have to start some kind of new life for yourself. Are you saying that Leo is... I'm saying, one way or another, Leo is gone. No. Right now, I'll go talk to your doctor. Pick you up in about an hour, is that all right? Wait, I want to thank you. I... Uh, yes, well, maybe now you're beginning to face reality. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe what? Oh, I don't know. I'm so... Sure. It's a bad spot to be in. You're really very kind. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's just a technique. Don't let it fool you. Well, at least you've made me feel better. <laughs> you ready to face it? I think so. Whatever it is, I... I guess I'm ready to face it. You wanted to see what Mrs. Renard was carrying when she was brought here, Lieutenant? It's important, Doctor. Well, we're about to give her her things back since we're releasing her. Just her clothes. That's no, not important. A handbag... And this package, it's from the ladies. Well, that's the most exclusive women's shop this side of New York. I suppose she believed in treating herself right. Why not? It was her money. Anything in the handbag? Oh, the usual odds and ends. Papers? We couldn't find any. Driver's license? Nothing. No credit cards. No identification. Well, now that doesn't sound right. Well, she said she was going off uh, just briefly to shop, and she didn't want to be loaded down with a big handbag. So she just took her small purse with some money and makeup, left everything else in the car. Oh, there is this snapshot. Hmm. Must be Leo. He'd have to be Leo. You know something? He looks familiar. He looks familiar because you've convinced yourself he's a confidence man. That's right, he has to be. A smooth, experienced operator, too, which means he's been around, which means he may have done time, which means there's a make on him. His photo's been passed around throughout the country, and I would have seen it, and so maybe I'm remembering it subconsciously. All you cops are getting into psychiatry these days. Is that good or bad? Listen, let me borrow this snapshot. I'll have the boys run it down. Yes, Lieutenant, I've decided. I've called a hotel. I'll take a place there, and when my money runs out, which will be pretty soon, I can find a job. I intend to stay here until... Until what? Until I find Leo or learn what happened to Leo. Now you say you were married by a justice of the peace in Reliance City. That's right, and I'll never forget the man's name, Emmett Dunleavy. That's what the sign said in front of his house. Who recommended him? I mean, how did you know to go to him? Well, we got our license and we were driving along and we saw the sign. Who was driving? Leo. Go on. Well, that was it. We went inside and we were married. I don't think so. What do you mean you don't think so, Lieutenant? What would you know about it? All I'm saying, I don't think you were married. Now, just a minute. The ceremony was performed... We checked the city hall in Reliance City, and there's no record of your marriage. But there has to be. Ruth Olson to Leo Renard. No record of anyone named Renard getting married to anyone at all. What are you trying to do to me? And there's no justice of the peace named Emmett Dunleavy in Reliance City either. But, but, but the... That was his name. The sign distinctly said that his name... Look, I know it's hard to face so many disagreeable facts all at once, but there's no help for it. Oh, I know what you think. You think Leo what, is a confidence man who was out to swindle me. I'm going by what appear to be the facts in the case. I'm going by experience. Well, I wouldn't fight you except... Except that you love him. Well, love doesn't make you blind. It's just... Well... 
fun fact I simply cannot account for. Yeah? No matter what anyone says, Leo and I stopped at that service station. No matter what anyone says, it was open for business. No matter what anyone says, there was a man named Frank. And he said he'd fix the car in an hour and a half. And that I'd have time to go shopping. Well, here we are. As you can see, closed, deserted. For rent sign on the window. Face it, Ruth, face it. But it was real. So real. Transnational gas pumps, Okay. I called their office. They told me. Hasn't been a delivery here in three years since they canceled the franchise because the owner, Frank Walker, had died. But it was real. It was real. Now think. Think, Ruth. What did happen? <laughs> I, I, I just don't know. <laughs> oh, God, Lieutenant, am I... Am I losing my mind? But the service station was there. A man named Frank was there. We heard him speak. Or did we? Did the conversation actually take place at 1776 Jefferson Boulevard? Or was it all taking place in the mind of Ruth Renard, whose last name may not even be Renard, since there's no record of her marriage either? I'll be back shortly with Act Three. You don't see many people putting salt in their beer nowadays. Not that there's anything wrong with salt on radishes or french fries. But man, not in the king of beers. Truth is, the only thing salt can do for Budweiser is make it salty. An unwise thing to do to the only beer in America that's beechwood aged. Unsalted Budweiser has become the most popular beer in the world. And that's because in brewing Bud, the Budweiser brewmaster goes all the way for a taste a smoothness, a drinkability you'll find in no other beer at any price. And something else you can take without a grain of salt. The fact that when you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Amco Transmissions, Chuck speaking. How may we help you? I got problems. I got a really fantastic 58 Pontiac with a busted automatic transmission and a mother-in-law that's been visiting me for 10 days. <laughs> well, well, we can help you with the Pontiac. No, don't get a desperate man. Now, look, can you really fix up a car that old? Oh, sure. Amco serviced over 3 million automatic transmissions and over 400,000 of them were Pontiacs. We know Pontiacs cold. Pontiac, Ventura, and the Firebird, and the Bonneville, Carolina, and also Grand Prix. Okay, now look, you send the tow truck and I'll help her pack. Oh, you mean... Yeah, yeah. But the 58 Pontiac belongs to my mother-in-law. Aw, oh, nobody knows her automatic transmission better than Amco. Double A. MCO. She still insists she left her car there to be fixed under the watchful eye of her husband. The authorities insist that Leo ran out on her. Or perhaps there never was a Leo. And she creates this fiction because she cannot accept reality. Well, what is reality? Well, come on. Let's take a look at the place. As you can see, Ruth, deserted. But as you can see, Lieutenant, it's spick and span. How clean this place looks. Does this have the appearance of a shop that's been closed for three years? Well, where's all the litter that would collect? Why aren't these windows grimy and dusty? I checked it out with the real estate people. They keep the place shaped up. After all, they are trying to get rid of the place, you know. I was inside this place yesterday. But there's a padlock on the door. Whatever you want to say... However you want to say it, I know this. I was here. Okay, let's go inside. The real estate people gave me the key. You don't believe me. It's obvious by your manner. Well, that's no good. It's bad for me to have an obvious manner. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know you're trying to be nice. Well, I'm only trying to find some answers. Come on in. 
Well, does it look familiar? This only makes me more certain. I was here. I stood right here at this counter when Leo came out of the shop, which is right through that door, with Frank. Yeah. And told me what had to be done with the car. What you're saying is this visit only reinforces your conviction that you were here. Absolutely. Well, let's stay with that for a little while anyhow. How long were you gone? Exactly an hour and a half. I've already told you. Yeah, I know, I know. Are you sure? Positive. And what did you do? But I already... All right, never mind. I went to this golden mall. Yes, and? And I shopped. Buy anything? Well, I wasn't in too much of a mood for shopping. I, I missed Leo, and I was hungry. So I ran into a shop, and I picked up a nightgown. That took an hour and a half? No, I, I wandered around. I looked in windows, had a cup of coffee, and I even called Leo. I, I was away from him for three quarters of an hour, and I missed him so much I just had to call him. You called Leo here? Yes, here. Here? Uh, I don't see a phone here. Well, there must be. I phoned him. I spoke with him. How can you... Well, where's the phone? Uh, I don't know. Maybe... Maybe it's in the office. The office? Well, maybe the man, uh, Frank, has a private office, and that's where his phone well, is. Well, let's look around. Yeah, you're right. He's got a little cubby all here with a desk. And... Sure enough, a phone. Well, finally, have I said something you can believe? The phone's dead. No dial tone. I guess it isn't connected. I spoke on that phone to Leo. And, and, and the man, Frank, he answered it. Sure. Oh, your tone of voice. Oh, please, I, I don't mean anything. You but... can't help it. You want to be nice to me, but you think I'm crazy. No, I'm trying to go along with it. With what? With everything you say. What we need right now, more than anything else, is a break. Who knows? Maybe we'll get one. of you to take me to dinner. It's a line of duty. I can even put it on my expense account. You said that you had an important development. I think we do. Well, can you tell me? We think we know who Leo is. What do you mean? You know who he is. His real name is Wallace. Leo Wallace. That's impossible. Better let me finish. But I, Listen. We... we had his picture. Where? How? How could you get his picture? It was in your handbag. Oh. I ran it through the routine, and there's a very strong likeness to a Leo Wallace. A very skillful confidence man. Oh. A Leo had turned in a very big score. He'd flim-flammed some old gent out of about a million and a half dollars. Well, I don't believe it. He... Maybe you'd better hear it first. He denied it. The jury voted against him. He got a minimum of ten years, but there was an appeal... Just a few months ago, they found some irregularities in the trial, and he was free. Oh. Now, about the money. The money? The money he's supposed to have stolen. Oh. If he did steal it, he has it hidden somewhere. So, you see, there's a motive on someone's part to get him and get at the money. I never dreamed that, that, that Leo could... Uh... Yeah, well, as I say, we can't prove it. All we know is that... That your Leo's picture looks like this Leo Wallace. Then I don't have to be crazy. This could have all been just a plot, don't you see? You thought Leo was out to steal my money, and as it turns out, there were people after Leo. They could have arranged the whole service station set up. Well? Well, it's, uh, it's not impossible. Well, then can't you do something? How he could have arrived at this service station is something I'll get to later. The fact is, he did go there. Well, I tell you, he did. Me did. Now, if only we can put him there, things would make sense. You wouldn't be crazy. We'd have a lead. Why pick Frank's service station? It isn't the first one you came to. It was the first transnational gas station, and that was his credit card. Are you, uh, are you capable of being objective right now? I'm trying to prove to you I am not crazy. Well, pretend for a moment that all this happened to somebody else. Pretend that this is a story 
I'm telling you. I don't see why. A young woman tells a cab driver to take her to a non-existent gas station. But I have been there with my husband. We don't know that. We only have your word for it. So, when they arrive, she becomes hysterical and she tells the story you've told us. Okay, we check, we find out there is no record of the girl's marriage. No record of the justice who she claims married her to her husband. And her husband is most likely a notorious confidence operator, newly released from jail. Why would I Let's lie continue, about... continue, please. And we know very little about the girl herself. She worked at the hotel in Reliance City as a public stenographer for only a month. There's no family. I lost my parents years ago. I'm an only child. I had one aunt who's dead. Well, everything is so vague. We, we can't find anyone who's ever seen this girl with her husband. But, but we stopped at three motels between here and Reliance City. No one remembers seeing a Mr. Renard. You can check their registers. They, they must prove their Mr. and Mrs. Renard stopped there. Two of the certain... clerks remember a Mrs. Renard. That, that's because I went into the lobby to sign the registers while Leo took care of the bags. Now, once again, we have that same problem. Admit it now. If this were someone else's story, would you believe it? Right, I know. It, it sounds... Like... But if it is a hallucination, where did it start? No, it's real, it's... You said to the cabbie that you bought a gift for your husband. I did. No, no, you didn't. You bought a nightgown at Milady. Oh, but I... Why would you lie? Oh, maybe it isn't a lie. Maybe subconsciously you know you don't have a husband, therefore you really couldn't buy him a present. Then, then why would I have his picture in my purse? You may have found it somewhere. Maybe without knowing it, you, you fell in love with his picture and... Why is it all so real? I keep tripping you up all the time. Your story has so many holes. For instance, why do you say you called from the mall... When that phone has been disconnected for three years. But I did call. You have to believe me. Well, that means I have to believe your whole story, all of it. All of it is true. Yeah, and yet I can't check any of it. Uh, wait, wait a minute. There's one part I can check. And if you're telling me the truth about that one little part, then the whole story could make sense. What is that part? Uh, no. No, I, I, I don't want to get your hopes up. I'll, uh, I'll see you at the hotel. Oh, but Lord. I'd like to know. Well, there isn't very much I can do about it till the morning, anyhow. Lieutenant Powell, Sergeant, there's a telephone at 1776 Jefferson Boulevard. You got that? Yes, sir. It should have been disconnected for about three years. Now, I want you to find out if it was temporarily restored to service recently. If so, by whom? Somebody had to pay a deposit. I want the name and address. Yes, sir. I want that information immediately. Okay, Leo, take a little drink. Yeah, that's good. It'll make you feel better. There you are. Now, oh, you're going to be sensible? You can drop that. <coughs> Leo, as long as you're willing to catch, I can pitch. Be reasonable. I don't want all the money. I don't care if you kill me. It can come to that. Now, look. The old guy's dead. You can't give it back to him anymore. He has a family. And every one of them a millionaire. Leo, why should the rich always get richer? I've seen crooks like you go soft. Start to worry about right and wrong. Believe me, it don't last. It wears off. I'm only trying to save you from yourself. You punk, I should have recognized you at that gas station. Hey, it wasn't a great wig and a mustache. I look good in it, huh? Leo, back in the jailhouse, I protected you against all those dudes who wanted to shake the secret out of you. I saved your life. You promised me my peace. I'm entitled. I'm entitled. I'll kill you. Why, you punk. You're at the end of the line. You blew it. You blew it. You'll kill me for nothing, and this time they'll send you up for life. Never. You think I'm not going to kill you if you don't lead us to the door. That's wrong. I'll kill you. Go ahead, punk. Go ahead. Please, Leo, don't make me do it. Hit him one more time, uh -huh. punk, and I'll blow your head off. Hey, what? Keep your hands up high where I can see him. That's good. Bill, Eddie, hustle this one down to headquarters. You sucker. We could have been rich. We could have been rich. What do you get out of it this way? So, you're Leo. You all right? Yeah. Takes more than a punk like him. Yeah, let me get you untied. All right. 
I guess she was telling the truth all this time, huh? Uh, can you stand it? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> You're quite a guy, Leo. I have to go to headquarters to book him. I'll need you, too. Sure. I know you want to see Ruth. Why don't I drop you off at her hotel? You'll want to be alone for a while. Yeah, thanks. You can both come down later. There's no hurry. <laughs> Just a minute. Leo! Oh, Leo, Leo, darling! Hello, oh, Ruth. Leo, how did you... What made you... No, no, I don't want to talk. I just want to hold her. Leo! Oh, Leo, are you... Crazy, no. Oh. But I would be if I couldn't figure it out. Figure what out? That gas station, that was all a setup. Leo! How did they know I would stop right there, huh? What? How could they be sure somebody had to loosen a gasket just enough to make that noise? What? Somebody had to say, let's get off the highway at that particular exit. What? Somebody had to practically lead me by the hand right into the center. Leo, why would I... A million what? and a half bucks, that's a big Leo, enough... Leo, I love you. Oh, sure. How can you even think and that that's I... the right way to do it, too. I disappear. You become the poor, distraught, deserted wife. The mobsters figure you've been double-crossed, too. The heat's off you oh, forever. Leo, how can I convince you? What can I say? It's a great plan, baby. Even the phone call, that little cubbyhole office. The only place in the station that isn't open to view from the street. The only place where it's safe to jump me. That's why you installed the phone. Get me out of sight. Distract Leo, me. Leo, please. But the punk blew it. He gave his right name to the phone company, his correct address. So they were able to check him out. The punk wanted to save a 30-buck deposit for 30 bucks. He blew his shot at a million and a half. Leo, I he swear always to was you. a punk. And now for you, baby. Leo. Leo. Why are you looking at me like that? I think I'm gonna kill you. Leo, it's all in your mind. Oh, sure. Oh, I swear I had nothing to do with it. I love you. I love you. Let me prove it. Wait. Here. Look, that's my purse on the night table. See? In the purse is a twenty two caliber revolver. You look inside it. All right. You'll find it. Now, if, if you really think I'm guilty, go ahead and kill me. Will you kill me? What are you waiting for? <laughs> you see, you can't do it. You love me. You can't do it. You love Leo, me. Leo, <laughs> I'll be crazy. Lieutenant Powell, Leo's gone crazy. Just stay where you are, Powell. Just stay there. Leo, what are you going to do? Are you out of your mind? I let you come up here alone so you could figure it out for yourself. Yeah, I understand, and I have to kill her. Lieutenant, you can't just stand there. There's nothing he or anyone else can do, Ruth, except... Except... Hey, Paul. If she goes to jail, what can she get? At least ten. Ten. Ten, huh? In ten years, that... Beauty, that terrible, overpowering beauty of hers that blinds you. That beauty will be gone. She'll be old, old, worn and bitter, as good as dead, with almost half a lifetime still in front Leo, of her. Leo, give me a chance. If I kill her now, it's too easy. Leo, that will be over in a Leo. second. Take oh, her, Lieutenant, take her. Leo. We'll kill her the right way, legally, just... Leo, Leo, I oh, love I you. I love you too, Ruth. I love you more than anything in this whole wide world. But I'll get over it. You'll never get over me. Oh, I'll get over you, baby. And if I can't, if I don't, if I still love you ten years from now, I'll be waiting for you. Outside the prison gate. <laughs> did his love continue? Did he meet her at the prison gate ten years after? We don't know. It hasn't been ten years yet. What a story that would make. And we hope all of us will be around ten years from now to hear it. I'll be back shortly. And now, another story of the ball and chain, as Kellogg's Special K presents The Library. Welcome to the public library. May I help you, sir? Uh, yes, I'd like to check out. Shh. 
Um, I'd like to check out Famous Laundromats of the World by Audrey Schnorbart. Sir, excuse me, but isn't that ball and chain you're wearing just like the ones they use in the Kellogg Special K commercial? Uh, this ball and chain? Shh, yes, that one. How are you going to get rid of it? Well, you know, lots of good exercises, and by eating smart at every meal, starting with the Special K breakfast. Don't you have to watch your calories? Yes, and the Special K breakfast is less than 240 calories. Less than 240 calories? Right. A one-ounce bowl of high-protein Special K, four ounces of skim milk, tomato juice, and coffee. It's really tasty, and it's going to help me get rid of this ball and chain. I'd say it's <laughs> long overdue, get it? <laughs> Your happy ending could begin with the Special K breakfast from Kellogg's. You've been hearing some pretty lavish claims recently about miles per gallon. We'd like you to consider something equally important, and that's range. Range is the miles per gallon multiplied by the number of gallons your car's tank holds. Range is what makes the Buick Apollo such a special small car. It comes from coupling the Apollo's economical six-cylinder engine with a standard 21-gallon tank. It holds a lot, but it doesn't use a lot. Look into the Apollo. It's the Buick of small cars. Hi, Ms. Goldilocks here. Professionally, taste-testing diet drinks can be very difficult, but I just had to bear with it. Then I found sugar-free diet 7-Up. It doesn't taste like other diet drinks. It's fresh, light, natural, delicious. Sugar-free diet 7-Up tastes so good that I've taste-tested it hundreds of times, and each time I've given it my seal of approval. Yes, this one's just right. Now, this word from the New York Graphic Society. Midnight in the cemetery. The casket lid lifts slowly, and a tall creature with glowing eyes rises from the coffin. From time immemorial, man has been frightened and fascinated by the night-roaming, blood-sucking creature. A captivating new book, A Clutch of Vampires, now presents the very best tales from both history and literature. Spanning 2,000 years, it is the most diversified and thralling collection of vampirana ever published. A Clutch of Vampires by Raymond McNally. Our cast included Marion Seldes, George Petrie, Larry Haynes, and Gil Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division, the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg Special K cereal, and new sugar-free diet 7-Up. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.